Corporate credit is the best way to find returns. And with Apple's debt yielding more than 5 percent, well, let's talk about whether 5.7 percent should be scooped up right now with Joanna Gall Gallegos. She is a Bond Blocks co-founder, and she joins us now. Joanna, welcome. And Apple's just one example. There's a ton of blue chip companies with yields at levels like this and maybe some almost blue chip company with yields even higher. Yeah, I mean, in investment grade, it, it getting a yield around 5% for Apple, and that's a, a tried and true stock that people go to um, in a lot of instances. But if you're really looking for performance here, um, you really should be looking to the other side of the balance sheet right now. You should be looking at bonds. And in particular, when you can get 5%, over 5% in a treasury fund right now with low risk at all, we would say you need to go even further down the credit spectrum and get to high yield because that's the place where you're getting compensated. You're getting paid to take incremental risk. And I, I'd have to say in investment grade, while you're um, looking towards quality, there's more out there. And with the resilience in the economy, there's a lot of strength down the credit spectrum in, in corporates. Mm -hmm. So I guess one of the questions, Joanna, would be, you know, as I, you know, the, the, the pros kind of know how to sift through these things. But if I'm sitting at home and I've spent the last couple of years first figuring out Treasury Direct and then, you know, when then I was in I-bonds and now I want, you know, Q-sips of which corporate bonds I should be buying. I mean, give me some really kind of specific and tactical ideas. Um, don't buy bonds. <laughs> buy ETFs. Uh, it is hard Are you serious? To buy. You would yeah, buy ETFs instead of bonds? Instead of bonds directly, because I think what you described is going on to the Treasury site and trying to buy, you know, a 10-year Treasury bond or, getting, like you mentioned, I-bonds. And that's a hard process, whereas you, you should be using the modern technology of an ETF. Buy a Treasury ETF. It's much easier. You can buy it in your, in your brokerage account. And now you can buy corporate debt that's more specific. So at Bondblox, we do very specific corporate debt. You can buy the high yield I'm talking about. And most specifically, you can buy it along the risk spectrum. And I, we, we really love, we loved it last year. We loved it this year. All year this year, top performing. We'd say you should buy triple C. All right, let's talk, Surat, about a couple of things she mentioned there and, and just jump in, take it whatever way you want. Number one is the uh, are you getting sufficiently compensated for going out on the risk spectrum? Uh, and number two, the idea of buying an ETF versus buying a bond that you could hold to term and have basically, uh, if nothing goes wrong, have basically no risk of uh, capital loss. Right. So I, I think the interesting part there is also depends on the asset size and also your ability to go do the research, right? So I think the point here is for the individual investor who doesn't have the bandwidth, the time to do it, I think using an ETF could make a lot of sense. What you really have to look at two, two things is what is the duration? So I'd love to know kind of what is the ones they're recommending because you want to stay shorter especially if you've got credit risk, as we talked about before. And then also, how does the cost factor come in? You know, what are you paying for all this as opposed to kind of doing it yourself? So I think the cost benefit there has got to be, and, and I think what they have is a good product for the individual who doesn't also have enough capital to diversify, right? Individual bonds are good when you've got a lot of capital to diversify. But if you've got, you know, capital that's hard to buy bonds, whether you're buying 20000 or 30000 I think this works for the individuals, but you've got to stay shorter. And when you say cost, you're talking about the, um, uh, the annual charges uh, that are associated with the with Yeah, the so, so there's a, yeah, the, the annual, the, the, the fixed fees that they charge for management fees, the transaction fees, mm -hmm. as opposed to when you go buy your own bonds, you're going to be paying those individually, and they're more opaque. Yeah. So you really have to know what you're doing in the individual bond world because there's no real market. They say there is, but it's much more opaque than it yeah. is. Joanna, final thought quickly. Yeah, just on those two points, high yield is lower duration than investment grade. It's around three or four years versus six or seven. So it has a lot less interest rate volatility than investment grade. So that, that's why we keep recommending that it's probably the best kept secret in fixed income mm -hmm. is to get out into high yield and specifically triple C because of the fundamentals are still strong. And, you know, for costs, you can buy, you know, a high yield ETF, you um, know, in, in our range around from 35 basis points up to 40 basis points. It's very effective, very easy to get these trades on and a lot more simpler than trying to wade through it yourself, as mentioned. Yeah.